Okay class, in this video we're going to um, fill out the section of your flipbook that deals with determining the distance between two points when you don't have those points plotted on a graph. So um, this section is section number one in your intro to IM2 flipbook, section number one. It is the top flap left hand side. You should see this question already pre-printed. What is the distance between point A and point B? And I've already filled out for you, and you can copy this, the title for this section, Distance Without a Graph. And then uh, right below the question, go ahead and write the distance formula so that you have that as a reference because that is the most common way of determining the distance between two points without a graph. Now leave some space here between the question and the distance formula because you need to do, we're going to do a little labeling right here below these points and I want to make sure there's room for that. So you're writing distance or d is equal to the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. Now class, I want you to get used to saying these terms correctly. A lot of students will read this, um, re read this equation and they'll say x2 minus x1. That's not correct. If you said x2 minus x1 mathematically, that's going to look like this. x2 minus x1. That's like 2 times x minus 1 times x. And that's not what this formula is saying. Let's talk about what this um, sub 2 and sub 1 is because again there's lots of confusion in previous years and I'm going to try to clear this up for you. Well, let's take a look at these two points, point A and point B. And I'm going to need to have some way of knowing how to plug in these numbers 16, 7, 12, and negative 3 into this equation. I think obviously you see they're going to go in these spots right here. but how do we put them in and how we put them in is very important. So let's go over uh, point A first. Now we know that point A, if this is a coordinate on a, on a grid, we know that the 16 is the x value of the coordinate and the 7 is the y value of the coordinate. I don't know why this is not changing color. Hang on one sec. Let's fix this. Oh, I see why. All right, let's do this again. 16 is the x value of the coordinate, and 7 is the y value of the coordinate. And over here at point B, we have also again, we have the x value of the coordinate, and we have the y value of the coordinate. Now the problem is, if we label them this way, we've got two x values. They're totally different numbers. And the question is, how do we keep track of those? If I said to you, what is the value of x, some of you might say 16, some of you might say 12, and you both be right, but the question is there's confusion there as to which one we're talking about. So mathematically, we've come up with this little system of telling the difference between these two x values. What we do is we put this little sub number here. It's smaller and lower than the actual value of x, and it just tells you uh, how to tell the difference between those two x values. And I could put anything here. I could say that this one, I'm going to call this one x sub 1, and I'm going to call this one x sub 2. That way, if I said to you, or asked you, what's the value of x sub 2? You'd all say 12. You would know which one it is. I don't have to use those numbers, though. I could flip them around. I could say, this is x sub 2, and this is x sub 1. I could use something entirely different than that. I could say, oh, I'm going to call this x sub a because that's the x value of the point a. And this is x sub b. It, it doesn't matter what you use. It's just, it's just a label that's, let, that's letting us all know that these two x values are different and we need to do something a little bit more with that variable x to tell the difference between the two. Now, look at our equation. We have x sub 1 and we have x sub 2. So clearly they want us to use a 1 and a 2 here. 
Now I'm going to just go ahead and do it this way. I'm going to say this one is x sub 2 and this one is x sub 1. It doesn't make a difference. I could have said this is x sub 1 right here. Sorry, where'd my cursor go? Got it. This is x sub 1 and this is x sub 2. It doesn't matter whether I put the 2 here and the 1 here or the 1 here and the 2 here. What does matter is that once I call this x sub 2, I want to call this y sub 2 because these two very these two values go together. These are the these are the x and y coordinates of point A. So I don't want to mix these. If I use x sub 2 here, this is going to be y sub 2. And and the same logic applies here. If I said this is x sub 1, this is going to be y sub 1. So now you see that we give each of these values, the x value of point A, the y value of point A, the x value of point B, and the y value of point B, I've given them a sub number just so we can tell the difference between the two. And now all we have to do is plug those values into our distance formula. Now I recommend that when you get these kind of questions on homework or on tests or quizzes that you always label your coordinate values before you start using the distance formula. If you don't do that, I see students all the time. They'll mix these up. They'll put the wrong values in the wrong places and therefore come up with the wrong answer. So let's go ahead and write this out. Distance is then equal to the square root of if I can draw that long enough, the square root of, we've got x sub 2, which is 16, minus x sub 1. Now, let's take a moment here to talk about this minus sign. This minus sign, or this subtraction sign, is part of the equation. It would be a good idea, as you work through distance problems with the distance formula, to write the minus sign, because that's part of the equation, and then look at the value of x sub 1. So in this case, x sub 1 is positive 12, or just 12. So I'm going to go ahead and write 12. Let's close the parentheses there now, and put our square, because that's going to be squared. Now we're going to put plus. Let's take a look at y sub 2. y sub 2 is 7. Remember, we have a minus sign or a subtraction sign that's part of the equation. I'm going to write that first. And now let's take a look at y sub 1. y sub 1 is negative 3. And now I'm going to close my parentheses and put a square there. Let's make this radical a little bit longer. Okay, now we've plugged in our x values and our y values. Let's begin to simplify this answer. So distance is equal to the square root of 16 minus 12 is 4. So we're going to have a 4 in parentheses. That's going to be squared. Plus Let's take a look at what's going to be in the parentheses here. Now, let's be careful. This is 7 minus negative 3. If you put 7 minus negative 3 in your calculator, you're going to get 10. Remember that when you subtract a negative, it's like adding the number. It's, they basically cancel themselves out. So this is actually 7 plus 3, which is 10. And now we have 10, and that's also going to be quantity squared. So we've made the jump from this, sec this uh, line to this line. Let's go ahead and continue to simplify. Distance is going to be equal to the square root of 4 squared is 16. 10 squared, or 10 times 10, is 100. So I'm just going to continue on with this line now. And that means the distance between points A and B, we can add these two numbers together, is the square root of 116. Now again, I've talked about this before. If I asked you how far it was from here to Stater Brothers, you wouldn't say, oh, it's the square root of 116. You would typically convert that to a decimal. 
So let's go ahead and put that in your calculator, the square root of 116. Go ahead and do that and please verify that you get the same answer I do. If we round it to one decimal point, it's going to be approximately 10.8. 10.8. Now we're not finished yet class. It's not just the number 10.8. This is a measurement. It's the distance between these two points. Now if, if, if this question said the units are in miles or in feet or in yards, you would put that unit of measure down here. 10.8 yards or meters or feet or miles. In this case it doesn't tell you what the unit of measure is. So in that case you will always just write the word units. It's 10.8, approximately 10.8 units. And remember class, we keep practicing this. Our answers should almost always be in a complete sentence. So in this case, we would write it out in this way. The distance. The distance. between A and B is, I can say, 10.8 units. And there we have our final answer. And I just noticed there's a typo here. What is the distance between a and, this should be and, so I'll just fix this for you guys. You can fix this in your flip, but this is A and B. And the answer is the distance between A and B is 10.8 units. That gives our answer in a complete sentence.